Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is how to increase your lifespan by nine to 10 years. So this comes from a study by Stephen Lynn that was actually published in 2015. So almost 10 years ago. And in this study, he and his colleagues looked at specific risk factors and how many years you could add to your life by eliminating each of these risk factors. And this applies to all adults in America over the age of 30. So let's go through each of the risk factors and how many years of life you could gain if you eliminated that risk factor. And it's different for men and women, so we're going to go through both. So, it is listed in descending order in terms of years added to your life. Okay, A number one, as many of you can imagine, is smoking. If you eliminate the risk factor of smoking, if you're a man, you add 3.2 years to your life. And if you're a woman, you add 2.39 years to your life. Number two, high blood pressure. If you eliminate the high blood pressure risk, in other words, if you have high blood pressure and you get rid of it, or and really high blood pressure for the most part, is a disease of diet and exercise. I mean, there are some people who have other, you know, like a pheochromocytoma, which is a hugely rare cause of hypertension, but the vast majority of high blood pressure, it's a, it's a disease of poor diet and not enough exercise. Okay, so if you eliminated the risk of hypertension, you would add 2.5 years to your life if you're a man, and you would add, look at this, 2.92 years for a woman. You would add more years to your life by eliminating the risk of hypertension than if you stopped smoking. So hypertension is a huge deal for women. Okay, next up. Excess body weight. If you eliminated the risk of excess body weight, you would add 2.3 years if you were a man, and you would add 2.21 years if you were a woman. If you eliminated the risk of high blood sugar, you would add 1.57 years if you were a man, and you would add 1.38 years if you were a woman. High cholesterol. You would add 1.33 years for a man, 0.92 years for a woman. Low physical activity. Okay, so we've gone from things related to your diet to getting enough exercise. So if you eliminated the risk of low physical activity, you'd add 1.27 years if you were a man and 1.39 years if you were a woman. Again, it helps out women more than men. Okay, interestingly, nut, low nut intake, right? Because nuts have a lot of fiber and a lot of healthy oils. So if you have low nut intake, if you eliminate that risk, you would add 0.87 years for a man and 0.72 years for a woman. Low vegetable intake, 0.76 years uh, for a man, 0. 7-2 years for a woman. Look at this. Low fruit intake. Notice fruit, vegetables and fruit are two separate ones. I always put them together. I'm like, okay, I don't really like vegetables, so I'll just eat a lot of fruit to make up for it. Guess what? That doesn't work. I learned something. Okay, so if you have low fruit intake, if you eliminate that, then you, um, in other words, if you have adequate fruit intake, then you, have, you add 0.72 years uh, for a man and 0.61 years for a woman. Okay, low omega-3. Okay, omega-3 fat is like the good fat. It's the healthy fat that's that's found in fish, a lot of fish. Okay, so fine. If you eliminate that, it adds 0.62 years for a man, 0.54 years for a woman. Okay, now low al uh, alcohol use. If you eliminate alcohol use, then you would add 0.58 years for a man and 0.4 years for a woman. And then finally, sort of, a, you know, a completely different habit, but an important habit nonetheless, is if you fail to use your seatbelt. In other words, if you correct that and you actually use your seatbelt, then you would add 0.24 years if you were a man and 0.23 years if you are a woman. If you eliminated all of these risks, you would add 9.59 years to your life if you are a man. You would add almost 10 years to your life, almost a decade if you were a man. And if you eliminate all these risks and you're a woman, you add 8.98 years. You add nine years to your life, almost a decade. Okay, now, note, it is highly stratified. In other words, just the top three alone, if you eliminate the smoking, the high blood pressure, and the excess body weight, you can increase your lifespan by eight years. So eight out of the almost 10 years is just in the top three. And for women, if you eliminate the smoking, the high blood pressure, and the excess body weight, then you increase your lifespan by 7.5 years. In other words, the majority of the years added to your life 
from this list of 12 comes from the top three. Okay, and those top three are related to things, frankly, that your mom taught you when you were growing up. Okay, your mom probably told you not to smoke when you were growing up. Okay, your mom probably told you that you needed to eat healthily when you were growing up. And third, your mom probably told you that you need to get exercise, right? So this has a number of implications for employer-sponsored health plans because again, this actually applies to people over the age of 30. So one, if I ran a company, I would actually put this chart in the open enrollment material. And I would be like, look, so much of your health is actually in your hands. It's not stuff happening to you. It's things related to your choices around smoking and eating and drinking and exercise. Okay, so like literally what you consume and how you exercise is hugely impactful in terms of literally adding a decade to your life. Implication number two, and I'll leave a link in the show notes to this study and also to some of the other uh, studies that I'm going to reference, is that believe it or not, being concerned about longevity, in other words, like not dying prematurely, in other words, like being fearful of death, it's actually more common in young people than in older people. As people get older, they actually become less fearful of death. So you'd be like, oh, I can't really educate my employees who are in their 30s and 40s about this because they don't care. The answer is they actually do. They actually care more about their longevity than older people do. I think another implication of this as well is that 25% um, of the increased mortality associated with these 12 risk factors is concentrated in only 5 to 6% of the population of 30 to 44 year olds. That's like prime working age. Okay. In other words, the ticking time bombs. Okay. Now I'm sure we all are in workplaces or we know of, you know, either through friends or whatever, you know, spouses of employees that are on particular employee health plans where look, they smoke, they got hypertension. Okay, well, again, what gives hypertension? Smoking causes hypertension. Drinking alcohol causes hypertension. Being overweight causes hypertension. Eating sugar causes hypertension. So like literally, like if you stop smoking, if you cut back or you stop drinking, if you lose the weight and you stop eating sugar, like many people can eliminate their hypertension if they do that without having to take medication, okay? Now, or taking it, listen, the, the medications to treat hypertension are super easy to take, they're super cheap, they have very low side effects, so even if you do have to take a medication to, to treat hypertension, it's like super easy, okay? So you know that there is a concentration of ticking time bombs in your workplace, or shoot, or even in your family, forget about the workplace, right? And so it's highly concentrated in terms of this increased mortality. Now, I'm not here today to talk about all the things that can be done to fix this stuff, but I think it is super helpful to see that risk factors have a quantifiable decrease in our longevity. That you can look at a specific risk factor and you can say, look, it's going to take a certain number of years off your life. And being aware of this allows those who are motivated to actually put some real numbers around how meaningful their change can be. So I was talking to an employer the other day, and frankly, he was, he was like really concerned about his employees like changing their behavior. Well, shoot, listen, if you, if you want to live longer, you got to change. If you want your life to improve, you got to change. If you want your employee health plan to improve, you got to change. So I know change is scary, but here's a way to show in years how change can help. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.